good morning. Good morning. It's great to be in worship with you this morning. If you are a first-time guest, we just want to say welcome. We are glad that you are here worshiping with us. At the end of the service, if you just go out to the uh, cafe, which is to the right after you exit these doors, there's a welcome center. There will be someone there that will greet you. We have a gift for you and some information about the church. Also, another little housekeeping note, at the end of each of the uh, aisles, there is an, a registration pad. Fathers out there, a happy Father's Day. And we have a little prayer um, video that we would like to celebrate our fathers by viewing. So Pastor Lynn is um, on out of town this weekend, and um, I'm just going to be do what Pastor Lynn does. What do we get to do today? Worship. Worship. So stand with us. Join us as we sing this morning. Cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace. Your faithfulness, my fortress. Over and over Make way through the
there is no doubt cause I have seen your faithfulness in my fortress over and over amen let us pray this morning heavenly father we come to you saying happy father's day because of you we are because of you we know that the mansion one day is truly ours we thank you so much for the gift of your son we thank you for this day because it didn't have to be please be with us this day this week continue to soften our hearts for your words all these things we pray in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. So today is a very special day, as Miss Heather has already said, it's Father's Day. So hopefully, if you haven't already, you have said Happy Father's Days to those great men in your life, whether it be your actual dad, 
or your stepdad or your grandpa or maybe an uncle or a coach or a neighbor. I hope you've taken the time to um, tell them Happy Father's Day and thank you for all that they do for you. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. And um, I really have a great dad. I've been very, very blessed. And I want to talk about some of the things that he has taught me um, growing up. So the first thing is he was a farmer, so I, or he is a farmer, and I was raised on a farm, so my dad taught me the value of hard work, and that has benefited me throughout my life, especially in my career, um, because he taught me the importance of giving it your, your all and waking up early and doing what you got to do to get things done. The other thing that he taught me and my brother was how to play basketball. He also co coached us when we were little, and he actually took us to see a championship game in 2012 when the Kentucky Wildcats won it all. So basketball was a pretty big thing in our house. The last thing I want to talk about that he taught me is about this. Does anybody know what that is? It's a, yes, it's a very important book. So my daddy took me to church on Sundays, and he taught me the importance of this book. And you know what that ended up doing? Oh, that fell out somewhere it ended up here it is it ended up getting me to take my kids to church on Sundays and teach them about the Bible so that's very important so you know um, my dad's a great dad an awesome dad but there are some things that he didn't do he didn't send his only son to earth to die for my sins he didn't create the world but somebody did who did that God that's right so yeah, so do you think there's someone else we should be thankful for today? Yes, yes. The, the Father, our Father, everyone's Holy Father, created this world and sent his own Son, and he's the perfect example for our fathers and the special men in our life here on earth. So our fathers, you know, they may make mistakes. They may say a bad word sometimes or yell when you're not listening. Uh, so they fall short sometimes because we're all humans, and humans do that. But... Our Father, God in heaven, he's perfect, and he leads the way, and he teaches us um, how we should be parents to you all. And one of our most important jobs as moms and dads here on earth is to teach our kids about this and about God and the Father that loves us in heaven, okay? All right, so let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so very, very much for the fathers in our lives, those special men, whether they be our actual father or our stepfather our grandfather, our uncles, our maybe older brothers or coaches, neighbors in the, 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 er, the area. Thank you, Lord, for letting them be that presence in our life, that, that male figure that leads us. Um, please, Lord, help them to remember the most important thing, their most important job, and that is to help us find you. Um, thank you, Lord, for teaching them, for being that example to show them that to love everyone that comes into their lives and to show kindness to everyone. We thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us, especially these children up here today. Please help us have a wonderful and safe day celebrating those male figures in our lives, those fathers or father examples. Please keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the children are leaving for Children's Church, we um, have come to the time in our service will, where we collect our offerings. And during this next song, there are some baskets up here on either side, and we also have some online options. During this next song, feel free to bring those forward um, and just sing with us as we uh, continue.
and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So uh, right now, uh, let's, let's take, be in a season of prayer and pray. And then in a, a minute, um, I will pray, and then we'll together say the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your promises. We thank you the promise you shared with Joshua is true for us. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And we're so thankful that you are with us. Those of us who are here, those of us who are far away, you are with us. Thank you come to you this morning and we ask for your guidance, we ask for your help, we ask for your intervention, we ask for your healing, because we are a needy people. We all have our individual needs, but as a, a body here in Brandenburg and, and a group in Meade County and in our nation and in our world, we, we need you. And we're so thankful for your promises that you are here with us and Give us guidance. Let us be your people. 
this morning. We thank you for uh, our fathers. We pray for the fathers uh, who are here and our fathers that you will you know, help us to be the people that you want and need and desire for us to be. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome again to the Brandenburg United Methodist Church where we have gathered to worship and we are thankful that you have chosen to worship with us. Uh, Heather at the beginning said that she was going to do her best Lynn impression. Uh, I probably will not. I don't know that I'm capable of that. But this will be, this summer will be the 30th year that Joy and I uh, have been part of the Brandenburg United Methodist Church. And it just amazes me uh, time and time again, God has brought the right person at the right time to, to lead us. And, and, and I know we're just so thankful for Lynn and the heart that he has for God and the ability that he has to bring us uh, and lead us into worship each Sunday, so we're, we're thankful for Lynn and Michelle and the girls, and uh, we hope that they have a, a great time of visiting family, and Lynn, good morning if you are watching uh, today. It's also Father's Day, we mentioned that a couple of times already, so special welcome to the dads uh, who are in our congregation today. Dads, sometimes uh, we get a bad rap, um, sometimes maybe we deserve it, but we all know the power of, of having an awesome dad is immeasurable. And I was blessed and fortunate that I had that. And so we encourage you dads this morning um, to keep it up. And uh, we hope you have a great day today. This morning we'll be looking at a passage from the fourth chapter in Galatians. Galatians is a letter that was written by Paul to the churches uh, found in the region of Galatia. It's a relatively short letter. Uh, only six chapters or so, so I would encourage you, challenge you, to read the entire letter. Uh, so you could read all of it this afternoon in maybe 30 minutes or less, or you could read maybe one chapter a day, and you'd finish it by Saturday of this week. So this morning we'll be in Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and I'll be reading uh, from the message. But when the time arrived... That was set by God the Father, God sent his Son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law, so that he might redeem those of us who have been kidnapped by the law. Thus we've been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the Spirit of his Son into our lives, crying out, Papa, Father, doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave, but a child? And if you are a child, you're also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Father, be with us this morning as you speak to us through the words written so many years ago by Paul. Um, and we're thankful uh, for your word. Be with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning we need to take... Um, a little trip back in time and put our, uh, ourselves in the sandals, uh, as it were, of the early Christians to better understand what Paul is saying to us this morning. So if we do that, you remember, of course, Jesus, uh, 2,000 years ago or so, was, was born uh, of the Virgin Mary, laid in the manger. We know the Christmas story. And then for 30 years, he grew up a uh, child of Mary and Joseph, trained in the, the trade of carpentry. About the age of 30, he, he entered into, he embarked on this public ministry where he traveled around this Judean countryside, teaching and preaching and doing miracles and, and all those things that we read about in the Gospels. Three years of that, 
uh, we know that on that Good Friday, he was crucified. But then on Sunday, the very first Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. And if you remember that Easter story, uh, several people ran to the tomb. They found the tomb was empty, and there was this person who was Jesus in a resurrected body, and he had an encounter with, with several individuals on that Easter Sunday. And then for a period of 40 days after that first Easter Sunday, Jesus in this resurrected um, spiritual body encountered different people along the way in Judea, uh, maybe as many as 500 or so. And then on the 40th day after Easter, he ascended into heaven. And the final words that Jesus said uh, to uh, people on earth were to his disciples on the Mount of Olives, and it's recorded in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from that, their sight. And that's exactly how the church of Jesus Christ grew. It's exactly how this church grew 2,000 years from, from this day. Uh, it started in Jerusalem, and then it spread out in all directions by word of mouth by these different men and women who traveled from Jerusalem to the region of Judea and then to Samaria and then all um, around the Mediterranean and ultimately the entire world, men and women starting with these 11 disciples. Paul was not one of those disciples, but he was one of those early missionaries. And so remember, you probably remember the story of Paul who started his life as Saul, who was a devout Jew, uh, who even was a persecutor of some of these Jesus followers. And then one day as he was walking uh, north from Jerusalem uh, to, to Damascus, he saw this great light and became a believer and a follower of Jesus. In fact, then Paul is known as one of the greatest missionaries of the early church, and he traveled by foot, by boat, and other means all throughout the, this region, and even made it as far as Rome, uh, sharing the word of Jesus and being a witness to the life of Jesus Christ. And so Galatia is a region north of Jerusalem in what is now modern-day Turkey. Uh, the book of Romans, the letter of Romans, Rome was a city. Uh, Philippians, Philippi was a city. Galatia was a region. So there were multiple churches in this region, and they were being led by local people who'd been trained and taught by Paul um, during his visits. And so um, Paul wrote this letter. We think, he, well, we know he was not in Galatia. We think he was in a place called Antioch uh, when he wrote the letter. And so this is probably 20 years after that Easter story, very early in the church. So these churches in Galatia, uh, they were trying really hard. They were doing the best that they could. They were trying to follow um, the leaders that they had, but they had fallen into some false teachings. And so we know that when Jesus came, the death and resurrection of Jesus provided the atoning sacrifice that kind of wiped away all of those. Remember the Old Testament, the laws and the codes and things that these, these Hebrews had to abide by. If they broke those laws, there was, there was a, a sacrifice that needed to be made. Maybe it was a lamb or maybe it was a, a bird or maybe wheat or something. And they had to make those sacrifices to atone for the, the sins that they had made in violating those laws. Well, Jesus came and that kind of was wiped away, but these Galatian Christians were starting to blend these two. Yes, belief in Jesus. Yes, faith in Jesus. Yes, the resurrection. But also, we have to hang on to these Old Testament laws and sacrifices. And they were kind of, had gotten a little sideways. I can kind of understand how that might have happened. Their leader, Paul, uh, was probably two or three hundred miles away. Really, none of the New Testament had even been written. Certainly, there was no way for them to Google uh, any type of theology um, or do any of that research. So I kind of give them a pass for messing it up 
just a little bit. Aren't you so thankful that in today's modern world, with all of the biblical resources that we have and the mass communication, that modern churches never mess it up and get sideways with our theology? If you didn't catch that, that was said with a tremendous amount of sarcasm. Because especially today, even today, we sometimes get sidetracked and lose sight of what Christ was really trying to tell us when he said that we are to be his witnesses. And sometimes, unfortunately, we are very poor witnesses. In the case of these Galatians, they were getting a little sideways, and since Paul did not have email, he wrote a letter handed it off to someone who traveled the two or three hundred miles north to these Galatian churches and gave them this letter. Which brings us to where we are uh, this morning. And so the first three chapters of this letter, Paul is explaining to them the error in their ways. And then beginning with the, the verses that we read this morning in chapter four, he corrects them and gives them the appropriate teaching. And in these verses, Paul describes, I think, three promises that our Heavenly Father gives us. And since it is Father's Day, I think it's appropriate to share a Father's promises to his children. Number one, you are safe, rescued from bondage to sin. It says, when the time arrived that was set by God the Father, he sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those of us who had been kidnapped under the law. In God's perfect timing, which I love that part of the, the story, God in his perfect timing. And isn't it true that sometimes we worry and wonder and flounder when all along God's timing is perfect. When the timing was right, he sent his son, his only son, Jesus, to be born in the manger, 100% human, 100% God, born uh, to live, born to die for our sins, to redeem us, to rescue us, to find us, to save us, to free us. All of us, every one of us, at some point we were lost. And the good news of the gospel is that through Christ we can be redeemed, we can be found. And once we've accepted that free gift of salvation, we can rest in the confidence that God is our refuge and our strength. We know there's so many crazy things going on in this world today, and sometimes it seems maybe even like we're out of control. But we can hold to the confidence that Psalm 46 is just as true today as it was when the psalmist wrote it many years ago. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains may fall into the heart of the sea, because we can be safe in our Father. So redeemed people rest in that confidence that God, our Redeemer, um, keeps us safe and remains in control. Earthly fathers, and John mentioned it this morning, you can't do the redeeming work of God. You can't do that. That's, that's his work alone. But I do hope that we strive as fathers to emulate that. And I do hope that we as dads are there for our children when they need us and when they need to feel safe. And I hope that all of our children can count on us to be an ever-present help in times of trouble because they'll face times of trouble. Number two, you are known and you are loved. It says, uh, God sent the spirit of his son into our lives, crying out, Papa, Father. And so the NIV uses this word, Abba, Father. And so typically, we think of God, we, you know, we think of him sitting on this throne, maybe with a gavel in his hand. He's the judge. And he is. That is very, very true. But there are many faces and facets of God, one of which is this name, Abba. It's, it, it literally means Papa, Daddy, it's very, very informal. It's very intimate. And God the Father, the judge, also wants to intimately know us and be in relationship with us. Sometimes maybe we think that, that we aren't good enough for that. Or maybe we're, 
we're too far away and we really don't want God to know the true us. But the cool thing is, the real thing is, that God wants to know us and he is willing to meet us where we are and accept us where we are. And then he begins the redeeming work of changing us into his, his image. Remember the time when Jesus uh, met that woman at the well. He didn't show up with a gavel in his hand. He didn't say change and then I'll enter into a relationship with you. He ex accepted her as she was. He met her where she was, and then he began to mold and make her into his image. And so Paul is telling these Galatians this morning, that, or way back then, that even if they felt far away from God, that he was willing to meet them where they were and to begin the work in them wherever they happened to be. Sometimes we today need to be reminded that we are never, ever too far away from God for him to find us and for him to meet us where we are. People crave acceptance. If you're a parent, you already know this. If you don't, you're going to find it out. Our kids will do almost anything to find acceptance, to be accepted in a group, to belong. Even if that thing is harmful, acceptance matters. And so our Heavenly Father offers us this gift of accepting us as we are, where we are, even if, it is, even if it isn't. Earthly fathers, you've got to know that your children need acceptance. They need to be known for who they are. And that doesn't mean that we don't work to grow and stretch and mold and correct, but it does mean that they need to feel our acceptance. Earthly fathers, I hope that you're able to offer that gift of knowing and accepting your children as they grow in grace. Three, you are an heir with a home in heaven. It says, and if you are a child, you're also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. People who have been redeemed and people who have been accepted and known by God are children and heirs. In John 14, it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. As redeemed children of God, we have this gift of a forever with him. And that we accept that as a gift. We do not have to earn that. In fact, we, we cannot earn that. And these Galatian Christians, that's kind of where they messed it up because they began to believe that they had to continue earning their Christianity by keeping these laws. And Paul said, no, that's not the way it works. You're a child of God, and as a child, you have access, and you have this inheritance. You cannot earn it even if you wanted to. And so many times we today feel like we have to earn our faith. We feel like we maybe have to earn our Father's love, and it doesn't work that way. If you are a child of God, it's a gift. You're a child of God. Rest and rejoice in that. You can get off of that spinning wheel trying to earn it when ultimately you never could. Now, do we try to continue to be in relationship with the Father? Do we try to continue to have an attitude like Him and grow in our faith and mature as Christians? Yes. But believing that we can earn our salvation only leads to discouragement, feeling like we can never do it, and then ultimately we end up just quitting, stopping. When the, when the real answer is that no one is good enough, no one can earn it, but everyone is eligible, and everyone is eligible to receive this freely through our belief. So earthly fathers, it's our human nature uh, for us to feel sometime like we have to earn our love. But it is a gift to let our children know that we you have the knowledge of being redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And I hope you feel safe in the power and refuge of our Father. And I hope you stop thinking that you have to earn your Father's love. Father, we're so thankful this morning that you love us. We thank you that when the time was just perfect,
just right. You sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary, to live a perfect life, to minister, to witness, to share. And then I thank you that you set up this plan, this wonderful plan of, of spreading your word from one person to the next, from people walking from place to place, village to village, office to office. And I pray that just like uh, many years ago, uh, people were, were doing that, we would be men and women who are willing and able to be your feet to go to minister and be your witnesses. I thank you for the gifts that you've given us as a father. We pray for dads today, really parents, moms and dad. I pray that we would be able to help our children uh, feel that safety and security and that unconditional love that, that you offer, all the things that you offer to us, may we offer to our children, and thank you for the model that you have shown uh, for us. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand and join us as we sing our song. So this song we've, we, have, um, we have sung it one time before. It's called God So Loved. It's by uh, We Are They, and um, it's just such a fitting ending to the great sermon that we just heard this morning. So please join us.
Christ's witnesses in Brandenburg and Battletown and Muldrow, Elizabethtown, or wherever you find yourself this week, and then come back uh, next week and worship again. Uh, thank you. Amen. Father's Day.